Homicide and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be going over myth number three in this Ensign article titled Missouri Myths. The myth is, but won't there be immense destructions in Missouri preceding the second coming so extensive that, quote, not a yellow dog will be left to wag his tail. Now, uh, we've already covered number two, uh, and number two is actually what we started with. Um, the reason why is because as I was doing the research for myth number two, and myth number two is the entire church will be gathered to Missouri. Um, as I was doing the research for the, the for the first one, uh, myth number two, there was stuff that came up that went along with that, so I just decided to start with that. And then last night we were doing a live stream. Uh, we were actually doing a trivia night, and um, I had I had someone that was in there, Barry Signs. He said that he had information to go along with this myth, myth number three, because I was talking, about, I was just kind of giving everybody a preview of what we were going to cover. Um, and so he sent this to me in an email. So we're going to go over the Ensign article. We're going to read some of what he sent uh, in this document. Um, and yeah, now just a little bit of house cleaning. Uh, <laughs> so I, I just, you guys, at this point, I can't keep up at all with uh, comments. There's just too many, and I feel really bad. There was actually a time uh, early on in the channel, uh, probably the first couple months, where I would actually do comments episodes where I would do a video and then respond to comments, but then it just became too much and I wasn't able to keep up with it. And now I've reached the point where I can't keep, I can't even like respond to all comments. Um, and it kind of like wears on me because I feel bad. I don't want anyone to think that I'm ignoring them. Um, you know, and there's others that, that I just can't sufficiently respond to. I just don't have enough time, you know. Uh, so, you know, that's why I'm doing a channel. Like, I, all the all the information that I'm covering is in the channel itself. So, if I don't respond to you, do not take it offensively. I, I simply just do not have time. Um, I'll try to do what I can. Uh, I can. It's much more easier for me to respond to shorter comments than it is longer ones because if you write a long comment, I want to make sure I give it uh, <clears throat> the the correct amount of attention uh, that it's due, and then respond to it correctly. But it's just it's less likely that I'll respond if it's a longer comment because I just I can't devote that much time to it. So do not do not take it personally. I do have an email if you want to like send information to be shared on the channel. Then I always appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> but I, I just I hope you understand. I, I want to like interact as much as possible with all of you. But there's only one of me, and there's thousands of you. <laughs> So, uh, that's why I think I might try and do more, uh, live streams. Uh, I, I think maybe like once a week, maybe more, but I'm going to test it out, but like once a week I want to do like a trivia night. Now, uh, I actually want to start out this video with a comment, um, because, uh, Teresa Washington, she's been watching the, and uh, Teresa, I'm so sorry, after all this time, is it Teresa or Teresa? Because I know sometimes people will pronounce it Teresa. Um, especially if like you have a Hispanic background, uh, I don't know. But anyway, Teresa Washington, she's been subscribed to the channel for a long time, um, interacts a lot, really has a lot of good information, and uh, she missed the trivia night last night. And so one thing I want to ask everybody is, uh, anyone that's interested in doing trivia night, uh, what do you think would be the best day to do that? I, I realized after reading her comment that, Last night was probably not the best time because it was Wednesday and a lot of people were doing things like young women's, young men's, or doing, uh, you know, ward activities, right? So uh, put in the comments below. First, I want to, like, gauge, are you interested in participating in a trivia night? And what day do you think would be best for that? Put that in the comments below, please. Okay, so I'm going to start with her, uh, I'm going to start with her comment because it actually kind of ties in a little bit uh with talking about Missouri, and uh, she said something fascinating, and I believe Teresa Washington, okay? I believe her. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, she's good. If she if she says anything in here, I believe it. She says, I didn't get on in time due to young, young women's, young men activities, uh, watching now for fun. 
Uh, something you said reminded me about something I think is amazing, so I thought I'd share a little bit of information with you that applies to the Midwest, Central States, and Southern States. We had our state conference recently here with Matthew S. Holland of the 70. Our area mission president stood up and spoke about what Elder Bednar told him. He said that people are moving out here and not knowing why. Now, uh, Teresa is one of those people. She uh, moved from Utah to Arkansas, and uh, I'm the same thing. We moved from Arizona to Kansas. I'm originally from Utah, but um, most recently we were living in Arizona for several years. Uh, we came here because of home prices and because we wanted a homestead. And homesteading in uh, Arizona, uh, buying a property is much, 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 much more expensive uh, and that's the case with any state west of Kansas. So when you look at like Texas, Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, um, so on and so forth, you're going to find a lot better prices for properties. And um, frankly, uh, compared to Arizona, better places to homestead. I mean, Arizona is a de <laughs> it's a desert. People do it. Uh, you know, if you're in the Phoenix area, down in the Southwest Valley, well, the whole West Valley, there's a lot of farmland and people do it, but you get you get a lot more if you come here to the Midwest for your money. So uh, we have a couple in our ward that moved here from Idaho. Uh, so I think I, I, this it's all just anecdotal, you know, if I was to give you all the evidence, but it does seem like there's many people moving from the West to the Midwest. And I think the thing that's driving that is home prices. But anyway, let's continue with what she's saying. Um, oh, and by the way, there there's somebody. There was somebody that uh, shared a really cool story. I think her name was Heather. She's moving to Wichita from the south. She had a cool experience where she was wanting to kind of. She was wanting to leave her situation, and. Um, you know, she got her answer from conference because they announced the Wichita, Kansas. And so she took that as an answer. And so she's going to be moving here. So there, there's a lot of people. And I've, I've heard number, a number of stories um, already of people moving here from other places to the Midwest. So anyway, um, he said that the stake center of Zion, or he said that the center stake of Zion will not be far from here. Uh, I'm in Northwest Arkansas, so he must have been talking about Missouri. Yeah, uh, undoubtedly he was talking about Missouri. Th this is just further evidence that um, Missouri, it really will be the center stake. It'll be the center place that Jackson County, Independence, Missouri, uh, that really will be the New Jerusalem. Although, I've talked about on the channel before how I do think that Salt Lake City currently has that status, so to speak. So I think that the Lord could fulfill prophecy by, quote-unquote, visiting New Jerusalem uh, by going to Salt Lake City and then later us building up uh, New Jerusalem in its permanent location in Jackson County. But anyway, um, in thou okay, in that thousands of stakes will be, will be built out here to support the center stake, a.k.a. New Jerusalem, and that we're only getting started now. Yeah, I totally, I totally believe that's true. I do. Uh, take it as you will with a grain of salt. And um, yeah, I mean, of course, but, uh, you know, Teresa, I, I believe you. Um, I feel like I know you, um, you know, you've been with us for since pretty close to the beginning. So anyway, take it as you will with a grain of salt, as it is secondhand info. But Elder Bednar to Mission President Collins to me, I believe it. Uh, not only that, but I believe it because... That was our story. We moved out here not knowing why, but had a blessing <clears throat> had a blessing by our best friend in Utah who basically told us to up and go. Uh, he was either the worst friend ever <laughs> or it was really the Lord telling us that. Well, I, I tend to believe the latter. Uh, once we came out here, we've run into a handful of people who had similar experiences and have shared that in fast and testimony meeting. Yeah, and I have too. Where I'm at, it's not just the couple from Idaho. There's another one from Utah, and yeah, it, it is, I think it is happening. Uh, my bishop last week talked about it and believes, as I do, that the Lord is about to do a great work and wonder in this area of his vineyard. And I don't think it's just limited to Arkansas either, but all around the future, 
all around the future center stake. Anyways, thought I'd share. Hope that's not too personal. No, I, I don't think that is too personal. Uh, I don't. So thank you for sharing that. Um, this is one way, you know, that prophecies and things can be fulfilled in, in building up New Jerusalem. Maybe we're just in the initial stages. Um, I tend to think more about the the people of the city, right? The people of the area being built up, being a, a Zion people, more so than the actual buildings. But at some point, the buildings will come along. All right, so let's move on uh, to myth number three of this Ensign article. This is April 1979. Uh, it's an article by uh, Graham W. Doxey. And just as a reminder, he was first counselor in the general presidency of the young men. Okay. All right. This is what he says. Okay. Myth number three, but won't there be immense destructions in Missouri preceding the second coming so extensive that quote, not a yellow dog will be left to wag his tail. Oh, and by the way, there was somebody in the comments a while ago that was like, no, don't move to Missouri because there's going to be great destruction there. And um, I know that person was well-intentioned, but that may not be the best of advice. If, you're, if you feel in your heart that moving to the Midwest is the right thing for you and your family, do not let this stop you. It's a myth. It's a myth. Uh, let's read about it. It's true that destruction throughout the earth is one of the conditions prior to the second coming. Yet, as far as destruction in Missouri is concerned, there are two schools of thought among members. One believes that it has already taken place. Elder B. H. Roberts published a report, a reported prophecy of Joseph Smith to Alexander Donovan, his lawyer in Missouri. According to Donovan's brother-in-law, writing the incident over 70 years after it occurred, Joseph Smith warned Donovan that, quote, God's wrath hangs over Jackson County, and you will live to see the day when it will be visited by fire and sword. The fields and farms and houses will be destroyed, and only the chimneys will be left to mark the desolation. Uh, General Donovan said to me, uh, his brother-in-law continued, that the devastation of Jackson County during the Civil War forcibly remind him, reminded him of this remarkable prediction. Elder Roberts cites additional descriptions of Jackson County's role during the Civil War as fulfilled uh, as fulfillment of this prophecy. See, <clears throat> excuse me. See comprehensive history of the church, and I actually think that that's what this is right here. We're going to read portions of that here. This is what um, this is what Barry Signs sent. Comprehensive history of the church by B. H. Roberts. Okay, uh, the other school of thought on the so-called yellow dog prophecy is that some members feel it is yet to occur. However, a study of the supposed source of the prophecy is helpful. It seems to have originated in a conversation between Heber C. Kimball and Amanda H. Wilcox in Salt Lake City in May 1868. She reports him as saying, quote, the western boundaries of the state of Missouri will be swept so clean of its inhabitants that as, Pregum, as President Young tells us, when we return to that place, uh, there will not be left so much as a yellow dog to wag his tail. That's from Prophetic Sayings of Heber C. Kimball to Sister Amanda H. Wilcox, uh, page 6. There seem to be a number of questions about the authenticity of this account since Heber C. Kimball was apparently in Provo, not Salt Lake, during the month of May. Also, no other record exists of Brigham Young making a similar statement. However, it is sufficiently similar to Joseph Smith's statements, except for the yellow dog that someone may have remembered. Uh, that sorry, that someone may have remembered the original substance, but in the re retelling allowed embellishment to creep in. Uh, the above are only three of the myths associated with. Okay, so that's it. That's it for that one. Okay. So let's go over here to uh, what was sent to me by Barry Signs. This is a more uh, comprehensive, um, well, it's, a, it's just like a direct excerpt from that book. Uh, he sent it to me, <clears throat> excuse me, he sent it to me like this. Um, it's also, you can also find, I think, the entire book right here at this link. So I'll put this link in the description below. Um, 
I have it right here so I can share this. I can't, basically I open this with Google Documents and this is how it is and then I can share a link so you can come to this, okay? So I'm going to read from this though. So he says that the more pertinent things are uh, in bold. So I may not read the entire thing, but let's just uh, let's just start with um, right here and then go until we're, we're satisfied and we get the point. Uh, but what of Missouri? Did she pay any penalty for her wrongdoing? I answer these questions in the affirmative and hold that Missouri paid dearly for the violations of her guarantees of religious freedom and for her many acts of lawlessness and her cruelties practiced toward the Latter-day Saints. Let me actually zoom in in case you want to read along. But those who cry transgression do it because they are the servants of sin and are the children of disobedience themselves. The following prophetic incident is given upon the authority of Mr. Uh, Leonidas M. Lawson, <clears throat> now of New York City, formerly a resident of Clay County, Missouri, and a brother-in-law of General Donovan's. Quote, in the year 1863, I visited General A.W. Donovan at his home in Liberty, Clay County, Missouri. This was soon after the devastation of Jackson County, Missouri, under what is known as Order No. 11. This devastation was complete. Farms were everywhere destroyed, and the farmhouses were burned. During this visit, General Donovan related the following historical facts and personal incidents. Uh, then, quote, end quote, then follows in Mr. Lawson's account a recital of the treatment meted out to the Saints in Missouri from the time of their first arrival in 1831 to their expulsion, including recitals of the personal relations of General Donovan and Joseph Smith, in which the following incident occurred during the Prophet's imprisonment in Liberty Jail. Quote, On one occasion, General Donovan caused the sheriff of the county to bring Joseph Smith from the prison to his law office for the purpose of consultation about his defense. During Smith's presence in the office, a resident of Jackson County, Missouri, came in for the purpose of paying a fee which was due, due by him to the firm of Donovan and Baldwin and offered in payment a tract of land in Jackson County. <clears throat> Quote, Donovan, I advise you not to take Jackson County land in payment for the debt. God's wrath hangs over Jackson County. God's people have been ruthlessly driven from it, and you will live to see the day when it will be visited by fire and sword. The Lord of hosts will sweep it from the from the besom, bosom of destruction. The fields and farms and houses will be destroyed, and only the chimneys will be left to, to mark the desolation. Uh, General Donovan said to me that the devastation of Jackson County forcibly reminded him uh, of this remark, if this remarkable prediction of the Mormon prophet. Quote, in the spring of 1862, my regiment went south and it was during that time that Order Number 11 was issued. But I was back there again in 1864 during the price raid and saw the condition of the country. The duty of, of executing the order was committed to Colonel uh, W.R. Pennock's regiment, and there's no doubt that he carried it into effect from the how, from the how the Copperhead papers made at the time. Uh, I went down the Blue River. We found houses, barns, outbuildings, nearly all burned down, and nothing left standing but the chimneys which had, according to the fashion of the time, been built on the outside of the buildings. I remember very well that the country looked looked a veritable desolation. So, I mean, there you go. Okay, I think, I think that's all that we'll read. Um, if you want to read more, it looks like there's a lot more that's in bold, just to kind of um, further support this point. Uh, further support this point but uh yeah i'm not going to read it all because it would be too long but if you want to like look at it for yourself again i'll put the link in the description below um it's going to be read only so you won't be able to edit it but um if you want to check it out then i would encourage you to do so so uh, you know i personally i'm going to go with this enzyme article i'm also going to go with what we just read um 
in my view, Missouri is completely safe to move to. Not saying that things can't happen, because things can happen anywhere in the world, uh, as far as God's judgments are concerned, uh, when it comes to the second coming. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, I wouldn't not move here because you're worried about the western boundaries of the state being completely destroyed, so much so that a yellow dog uh, will not be found wagging his tail. Um, I think that there, that's just a myth. There, there are so many like myths and stuff in the church. I'm just I'm sad to say, it, but there is, and I've I've heard them all growing up. Right, I, I've I've grown up in the church. And uh, I've basically heard it all, and most of you probably have too, especially if you grew up in the church. And um, sometimes I think that these things are told by uh, people that are genuine, but other times I think that some people just like the excitement of sharing something really cool, really interesting, and they like getting that attention from something that sounds cool. But... You know, we have to do our due, di our due diligence and research these things. Um, you should always do that with anything in life before you accept anything as truth. You should uh, trace it all the way back to its source, right? When you do research, you don't just say things. You, you find sources and then you share with other people your sources so that they can verify what you're saying, you know? So, it, it's just... You got to be you got to be careful. Not that it's going to like affect you eternally. The things that really matter when it comes to the gospel is the gospel. It's not uh, these little details and stuff like that. This is just kind of this is for fun. But um, anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Please don't be offended if I don't respond. There's just too many people. And um, I feel guilty if I if I don't respond. So I'm just I'm not going to respond uh, as much as I have in the past. And then also make sure to share this, especially with anyone that still holds on the, onto this idea. Uh, share this for their consideration. And I'll talk to you guys later.